Okay, module two, choice in a world of scarcity. Budget constraints and choices. Budget constraint refers to all possible combinations of goods that someone can afford given the prices of goods and services and the income or time we have to spend. Sunk costs, costs incurred in the past that can't be recovered. Opportunity cost measures the cost by what is given up in exchange. Opportunity cost measures the value of the foregone alternative. So here we have Charlie's Burgers and Bus Tickets and the budget. The budget's $10. Burgers cost $2. Bus Tickets cost $0.50. Cents, very cheap. So if Charlie were to spend all of his money, $10, on burgers, $10 divided by the price of $2, he would be able to spend $5, excuse me, buy five burgers. And if he spent all of his money, $10, on bus tickets, $0.50, cents, he would be able to get 20 bus tickets, and you could draw a line in between those two endpoints, and that is the budget constraint, but we will go through that. So budget constraint and choices continued. Types of budget constraints, limited amount of money to spend on the things we need and want, limited amount of time. Continuing on, budget constraint results. You have to make choices. Every choice involves trade-offs. No matter how many goods a consumer has to choose from, every choice has an opportunity cost, i.e. the value of the other goods that aren't chosen. The budget constraint framework assumes that sunk costs, costs incurred in the past that can't be recovered, should not affect the current decision making. Calculating opportunity costs, the steps. The steps to calculate opportunity costs. Step one, use this equation where P and Q are the price and respective quantity of any number N of items purchased. And budget is the amount of income one has to spend. So your budget is equal to the price of the first good times the quantity of the first good consumed plus price of the second good times quantity of the second good consumed on and on and on and all the way up to the nth price of the nth good. Step two, apply the budget constraint equation to this scenario. So we know there's $10 of the budget, substitute that in for budget, times $2 of a price, that's the burger, times how many burgers is con are consumed, we'll call this Q1, plus 0.5, which is 50 cents for bus, bus tickets, times the quantity two of bus tickets. So step three, simplify the equation. You solve for Q1. And here you can see the different steps, and you end up having Q1 equals 5 minus 1 fourth Q2. Q1 is the amount of burgers. Q2 is the amount of bus tickets. Step 4, use the equation Q1 is equal to 5 minus 1 fourth times 8. But what are we doing here is we're substituting in, and you can graph the results. So we're figuring out how many, uh, calculating the opportunity cost and we graph it. How many burgers and bus tickets can Charlie buy? We know what Charlie's budget equation is, and that is $10. By the way, that should say budget. I'll fix that. Um, equals 2 times Q1 plus 0.5 times Q2. So we can come up with a bunch of different scenarios, and we'll plot those all on the budget constraint, where we spend all of Charlie's money. Um, so A, point A would be 5 burgers, 0 bus tickets. We saw that as an endpoint. Down here at F, zero burgers, 20 bus tickets, and then you can see the different points in between. B would be four burgers, so four times two would be $8, plus four bus tickets, four times 0.5, that gives you your $2, you spend 10, so every one of those points is on the budget constraint line. Now let's look at the possibilities, the production possibilities frontier. It could be a frontier or a curve, so PPF or PPC. It's a diagram that shows the productively efficient combinations of two products that an economy can produce given the resources it has available. The production possibilities frontier similarities with the individual constraints. While individuals face budget and time constraints, societies face the constraint of limited resources, e.g. labor, land, capital, raw materials, etc. So same type of idea, scarcity, and we have to make decisions. Because at any given moment society has limited resources, it follows that there's a limit to the quantity of goods and services it can produce. In other words, the products are limited because the resources are limited. Production possibilities, frontier differences. Differences between an individual's budget constraint and a PPF. The PPF, because it's looking at societal choice, is going to have a much larger number on the axes than those on an individual's budget constraint. A budget constraint is a straight line while a production possibilities curve or frontier is typically bowed outwards, i.e. concave, towards the origin. 
Why? Production possibilities frontier differences continued. The general rule is when one is allocating only a single scarce resource, the trade-off, e.g. the budget line, will be constant. But when there's more than one scarce resource, the trade-off will be increasingly costly, e.g. the PPF will be bowed out. Production possibilities frontier diminishing returns. It's from the law of diminishing returns. As additional increments of resources are devoted to a certain purpose, the marginal benefit from those additional increments will decline. Hence, we will have what's called the law of increasing opportunity costs. So production possibilities frontier and opportunity costs. Law of diminishing returns and the curve shaped of the PPF example. If few resources are currently committed to education, then an increase in resources used can bring large gains. But if a large number of resources are already committed to education, then committing additional resources will bring smaller gains. The curve of the PPF shows as additional resources are added to education, moving from left to right on the horizontal axis, axis the initial gains are large, but those gains gradually diminish. Productive efficiency and allocative efficiency. Efficiency refers to lack of waste. Productive efficiency. Given the available inputs and technology, it's impossible to produce more of one good without decreasing the quantity of another good that's produced. Allocative efficiency. When the mix of goods being produced represents the mix that society most desires. So here we have a PPF that shows healthcare and education and the different points on the line are productively efficient and where society chooses to produce allocatively efficient, we need more information. But if we were at a point like R, we would be inside and that would not be productively efficient. Productive efficiency and allocative efficiency, society's choice. Why must society choose? Every economy faces two situations in which it may be able to expand the consumption of all goods. Society may be using its resources inefficiently, in which case by improving efficiency, and producing on the production possibilities frontier it can have more of all goods, or at least more of some and less of none. As resources grow over a period of years, e.g. more labor and more capital, the economy grows. As it does, the production possibilities frontier for a society will tend to shift outward and society will be able to afford more of all goods. Productive efficiency and allocative efficiency comparative advantage. The PPF and comparative advantage. When a country can produce a good at a lower opportunity cost than another country, we say that this country has a comparative advantage in that good. When countries engage in trade, they specialize in the production of the goods in which they have comparative advantage in and trade part of that production for goods in which they don't have comparative advantage in. It's hard to see and I'll fix this, but you can see there's two different PPFs here and there's going to be two different opportunity costs and therefore there will be advantage from trade. Productive efficiency and allocative efficiency comparative advantage continued. The PPF and comparative advantage with trades, goods in, are produced where the opportunity cost is lowest, so total production increases, benefiting both trading parties. The slope of the PPF gives the opportunity cost of producing an additional unit of wheat. While the slope is not constant throughout the PPF, it is quite apparent that the PPF in Brazil is much deeper than in the U.S., and therefore the opportunity cost of wheat is generally higher in Brazil. Rationality and self-interest. Assumption of rationality, also called the theory of rational behavior. It is the assumption that people will make choices in their own self-interest. The assumption of rationality, also called the theory of rational behavior, is primarily a simplification that economists make in order to create a useful model of human decision making. The assumption that individuals are purely self-interested doesn't imply that individuals are greedy and selfish. People clearly derive satisfaction from helping others. So self-interest can also include pursuing things that benefit other people. Rationality in action. Rationality suggests that consumers will act to maximize self-interest and businesses will act to maximize profits. Both are taking into account the benefits of a choice given the costs. Rationality in consumers. When a consumer is thinking about buying a product, what does he or she want? The theory of rational behavior would say that the consumer wants to maximize benefit and minimize cost. As the cost of the product increases, it becomes less likely that co the consumer will decide that the benefits of the purchase outweigh the cost. Rationality in action. Rationality in student examples. How does the student decide on a major? A number of things may factor um, into a student's decision on a major, such as what type of career a student's interested in, the reputation of a specific department at the university a student is attending, and the student's preferences for a specific field of study. 
you may discover that business analytics majors earn significantly higher salaries. This discovery increases the benefits in your mind of the analytics major and you decide to choose that major. Rationality in businesses. Businesses also have predictable behavior, but rather than seeking to maximize happiness or pleasure, they seek to maximize profits. When economists assume that businesses have a goal of maximizing profits, they can make predictions about how companies will react to changing business conditions. For example, if a company stands to earn more profit by moving some jobs overseas, then that's the result that ec economists would predict. Marginal analysis, cost. Marginal analysis, examination of decisions on the margin, meaning comparing costs of a little more or a little less. Marginal cost, the difference or change in cost of a different choice. Marginal costs sometimes go up and sometimes go down, but to get the clearest view of your options, you should always try to make decisions based on marginal costs rather than total costs. Marginal analysis benefit. Marginal benefit, the difference or change in what you receive from a different choice. The amount of benefit a person receives from a particular good or service is subjective. One person may get more satisfaction or happiness from a particular good or service than another. Economic rationality revisited. How then do you decide on a choice? The answer is that you compare, to the best of your ability, the marginal benefits with the marginal costs. Marginal analysis is an important part of economic rationality and good decision making. Positive and normative statements. Positive statements are objective and conclusions are based on logic and evidence that can be tested. Two types of positive statements, hypothesis, like unemployment is caused by a decrease in GDP. This claim can be tested empirically by analyzing the data on unemployment and GDP. A statement of fact, such as it's raining or Microsoft is the largest producer of computer operating systems in the world. Note also that positive statements can be false, but as long as they are testable, they are positive. Positive and normative statements continued. Normative statement involves value judgments of the speaker and the conclusions are based on value judgments that cannot be tested. Normative examples, we ought to do more to help the poor. Corporate profits are too high. Because people have different values, normative statements often provoke disagreements. Know the difference. It's not uncommon for people to present an argument as positive to make it more convincing to an audience when in fact it has normative elements. That's why it's important to be able to differentiate between positive and normative claims. Positive and normative statement differences. Know the difference. It's not uncommon for people to present an argument as positive to make it more convincing to an audience when in fact it has normative elements. Opinion pieces in newspapers or on other media are good examples of this. It's important to be able to differentiate between positive and normative claims. Quick review. How do budget constraints impact choices? Calculate the opportunity costs of an action. What is the production possibilities frontier? How can a production possibilities frontier identify productive and allocative efficiency? What is rationality in an economic context? What are some examples of rational decision making? What is the importance of marginal analysis in economics? What are some examples of marginal costs? What are some examples of marginal benefits? What are the differences between positive and normative statements? Which of these statements are positive and which are normative statements? State economies would be much stronger over time if states invested more in education and other areas that can boost long-term economic growth and less in maintaining extremely high prison populations. Higher education cuts have been even deeper. The average state has cut higher education funding per student by 23% since the recession of 2007 and 2009 after adjusting for inflation. Even as states spend more on corrections, there are under-investing in education children and young adults, especially those in high poverty neighborhoods. At least 30 states are providing less general funding per student this year for K-12 schools than before the recession after adjusting for inflation in 40 states.